Hi and welcome to the Business Career College video series. You'll notice in this video that we've uh, entered into a slightly different format. This video is very specifically tailored for students who are going through the Business Career College capstone course. Anybody who's going through any capstone course might find this useful. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes here talking about moving files from or moving a uh, worksheet from Excel into a Word document to make the display pretty and some of those kinds of things. So we, uh, and if you need this for Excel in general, it might be useful, but it's like I say, very custom designed for those going through the capstone course. So we have a Word document right now, a blank Word document and an Excel document open. This Excel document we've played around with a little bit and we have uh, built this thing the way that we want it. So now I want to take some information out of my Excel document. We're going to start with a very simple copy and paste here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cells that I want to copy over and I would recommend selecting exactly the cells like this. If you do something like this then you're essentially copying an unlimited amount of cells or an unlimited number of cells onto that Word document. So just grab what you exactly want to copy and we can then copy that over. So I always like to use right click and copy. Of course you don't have to do it that way. You could grab it all and use the control C function to copy whichever it happens to be. So now I have this selected and I'm going to go and open my Word document and now I want to paste this into Word. Now I can just do a straight control V or right click and paste whichever you want to do but that's not going to help me with keeping formatting pretty and some of those kinds of issues. So instead what I will do is I'll use the paste special function. Now I'm working in Word 2010 and in Word 2010 we have shortcuts into this, the paste special functions but for those that have older versions of Word uh, 2003 uh, 2007. I'm not sure about the much older versions than that, but you'll find a paste special function and you'll find it associated with the paste function in the toolbar at the top, which may look a little different, but you'll find it in the same rough vicinity here associated with paste. You'll see paste special. And some of these are just shortcuts, like I say, to paste special. We're going to choose actually paste special because it'll be more useful for more students. So we're going to paste special. Now there are two choices here. On the left side there's a radio button here where I can choose paste or paste link. And what I prefer to do when I'm working through the capstone course is to paste link because when I paste that link now if I make a change to my Excel document it will automatically populate into my Word document. Now that can have some downsides and I'll show you that in a second but let's assume that we want to paste link here. So I'm going to paste link and I'm going to paste this as a Microsoft, Works, a Microsoft Excel worksheet object and what's going to happen now is we're going to paste that into here and it looks just like it should and if I want to move that around or whatever the case is so maybe I want to put a title in over the top of this worksheet and I can manipulate it as I see fit now it is possible to resize it and this is something that can be useful when you have larger files or larger sheets that you want to paste in here I can't change it though. You'll see that I can't change it. If I double click on it, it brings me back into my Excel document. And I may have gone through that a little quickly. Let's see that again here. So if I go to change something that's in one of these cells, double click and it just brings me into Excel. And now I can change one of these values. So maybe I got one of the values wrong and I can change it in here and you'll see that that'll populate through. You'll see this total is 605,000 and if I go back to my Word document it's also 605,000. Now with older versions of Word or Excel you may have to sort of manipulate that where you may have to right click. So what I've done is I've selected the table and right clicked on it and I have updated the link or I would update the link, click to update the link and it'll do that for me then 
and I can also, you can see here, go to the linked worksheet object and I can actually manipulate the link. So for example, I may want to break that link and I can, sorry about that, I can do that right here. So I can see all my links here and I can see the link and I can break that link. So you'll come up with this little menu that shows you all your linked documents and then you're in good shape. Okay, but we're not going to break that link right now. We're going to leave it intact. So then maybe I have something Oh, I want to show one more thing here. I apologize. So right now, this table set up the way that I like it set up. My currency or my values, my dollar values are all in the currency format. I just want to show you something here because it's a common problem that if you use the accounting format, and I'll show I'll shave off the decimal places here. If you use the accounting format, then it doesn't paste so neatly into word necessarily. Now here it did for me. My columns are broad enough, but you'll see what's happened here is it's pushed the dollar sign over to the left of the column and often what you'll end up with is a little bit um, too narrow a column and then it'll sometimes push that down onto the next row. Now for some reason it's not doing it for me here, but that is a frequent problem. I'm glad I can't duplicate it, but uh, what I would suggest here is you want to keep everything in currency format as opposed to accounting format. It will make a neater transition into Word. So that's easy. That's a relatively contained spreadsheet. Now what if I have something more complicated? So here I have a multi-year cash flow statement. And this multi-year cash flow statement, if I try to copy the whole thing. So let's say that I want to grab all of this and I want to copy that into Word. And I paste it in here. It spills out across the page. It's too fat to fit onto the page. So now I want to find a solution for this. So some solutions that I might have, and I'm just going to keep going here so we can see each of them one at a time. One thing that I might do here is I might simply paste it as a picture. Now, pasting it as a picture is a little bit tricky here. Essentially what it's done is it's taken a capture of what's on that Excel spreadsheet and it has carried that into my Word document. The problem with this, with this paste as picture, is that there is no link to the source document. And absent that link to the source document, now if I change something on the source document, it's not going to change on this document. But it's not going to be that common that you have these very large tables to copy over here. And given that, this can be a nice way to copy maybe that final bit of work, that big thing that you want to copy over. Now you can resize this as with any picture in Word. But like I say, if you want to change something in the source document, you won't be able to do so here. Okay. So then other ways that we can copy this. So I know it's going to spill over. I know it's too fat to fit on the page. So we'll paste it in. We'll do the paste special and we'll paste the link. We'll paste it with the Excel worksheet object. And now it's going to paste in any change I make will carry over. So I'm not really happy with how this carried over. Say so that's too big for that page. So what I can actually do here is I can resize the page. The problem is then that resizing of the page is going to carry over to everything else. So one thing that I think can be useful is when you have this one very large document you want to convert over, what you might do is you might insert a section break here. Now the section break function can be hard to find. This is where you'll find it in Word 2010. 
So we want, I want to go to the previous page here, and I'm going to insert a section break. So now I have a section break means that if I do something like this, I'm going to change the orientation of my page over to the landscape orientation. Now it's wide enough to fit more data onto it. And now I want to go back for the rest of the document into regular portrait formatting. So now I can change that orientation back. So now my document has some in landscape and some in portrait. This can actually work out fairly nicely as well. You have to make sure that you do put your breaks in appropriately to accomplish this. And the breaks can be a little bit finicky to work with. Now, you have to watch something as well here. So remember that now I've pasted this with the link and it's going to carry over like that. So something that a lot of people will do when they're doing multi-year cash flow, for example, is they'll want to hide certain years. It doesn't make sense to show every year. So for example, you might want to hide years 61 to 64. And the problem is now when I hide those years on my Word, sorry, on my Excel document, it's also hidden, as you can see, on my Word document. This can be a little bit frustrating. So you have to pay attention to that. Sorry, that's copied with formatting. And we resize the page. So then other things that you might do, this is where you might go back and decide that, yeah, this is my big final project. So maybe what you want to do here is just to choose exactly what you want to show on the page and resize accordingly. So maybe for now I'm going to unhide this. And I say, okay, I want to show the first five years, for example. Maybe that's all I concern myself with here. I say that first five years, I'm going to copy that over. And again, we'll do our paste special here. And we'll paste this as a works, uh, sorry, a link with the worksheet object. Okay. So now that section is pasted in. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I want to paste that as a picture. So again, we're going to paste special. And this time we're going to paste this as a picture. So now remember, I can't change that. So hopefully this is something that I do when everything else is sort of done. This would be maybe my last set of steps. And now I can go over here and I can once again, maybe I hide those first few years. And I say now I want to show, oh, how about just some incremental years. So I want to show maybe every five years starting in retirement. So I just hide four year blocks here. And I think we get the idea. So I hide a bunch of the years and then I can copy all of that over. And now I can go and paste and I can paste that as a picture. Again, the same as I just did. And it'll carry over just like we saw a moment ago. So that can work out relatively well. That way it pasted in all of my uh, titles for each row and Remember, though, that then if you change something later on, you're going to have to delete that and then reinsert it because you have changed something. I hope that that helps with understanding how this works, how we get to uh, copy and paste uh, items from Word into Excel. It's a, pr a pretty useful skill, actually. It's something that can help with client presentations. It can help with your capstone course in general. And if you're going to use Excel, the ability to actually make it more presentable makes a big difference. Thanks very much, and uh, enjoy your capstone course.